about arguments. So we are venturing into this whole quarter is going to be focused in argument. I still want to take the time for us to, for me to kind of front load things for you before we start doing, there'll be a time in about probably three or four weeks, about halfway through the quarter that we do one or two timed writings a week because I need us working on that fast like thought process. I'm going back to cheating. If you cheated your way through that exam, that's gonna be that thought process of critically thinking quickly. It's gonna become apparent that you still are not able to do that, right? So when we get an argument prompt, here's what I need us to do. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna, try, to, I'm gonna try to have you guys focus on this first and it's hard to do in the beginning. One of the problems we have with argument is that when we read the prompt, we read the prompt and then we go blank on what things we can use. What I want to show you is that a lot of times, almost any piece of evidence you have, you can make fit into a prompt. It's just the way you approach that piece of evidence. So what I want to do is I want to start at the bottom and I want to plan evidence first. Without looking at the prompt, I want us to talk about evidence first. So what are our categories of evidence that we can use? Um, History. History. Current. Current event. Um, what? Science. And when we talk about science, we talk about even like our social sciences as well, right? And when we talk about science, we can talk about people, we can talk about movements, we can talk about experience or experiments, and we can talk about theories. So don't limit yourself to just like one thing in science, right? It, it's a little bit more broad than that. And external literature. Literature. I don't know if anything's external. I don't know what internal literature is, but so literature. Uh, personal expertise. We want to stay away from personal experience. I don't really care about it. So let's start with history. I want you to, we're, we're not even looking at the prompt yet. I want you to jot down, I would say you should be able to in each one of these categories, jot down at least five things. It doesn't need to be seeds yet. Just pumpkins right now is fine. Look at history. Jot down five things that you can talk intelligently about in history. It doesn't even have to be this year. You can go back to AP Human, AP World. You can go back to then. And in fact, when we get closer to the exam, I'm going to have you watch some of Heimler's history of like AP Human and AP World. All right, five things real quick. I'm just looking at pumpkins. Jot them down for history, history only. Ready, set, go. Y'all should be embarrassed. The what? American Revolution. Okay. What else? Cold War. Cold War. Reconstruction. What else? Civil War. Civil War. What else? Berlin Wall. Berlin Wall. Okay. Do what? Okay. What else? World War II. Abolition. What is it? Abolition. Abolition. Okay, abolitionists. If we have World War II, we also have World War I. You should be able to write down at least the last five things you've learned in U.S. history. U.S. or a push, at the very least. Don't forget about, like, I think any revolution or rebellion that you can talk about is good, right? 
American Revolution, everybody tends to go to. But, like, if you can talk about, like, the Haitian Revolution, if you can talk about, like, Bacon's Rebellion, anything that is, like, kind of outside of the norm is good. That's one of the things that we look at. And one of the reasons why we read what we read is because... Just like in rhetorical analysis where I had you organize it differently than most of the country, I like us to tend to try to find examples that are not your norm. American Revolution, Civil Rights Movement, Great Gatsby, which is the reason why we don't read it and because I hate it, um, uh, Rosa Parks, Martin Luther King Jr., right? Those things we don't write about. now. Next week, we're actually going to read on uh, a call for unity and then a letter from Birmingham jail. You can write about it after we read that because we will have spent like four days reading that, right? So you can talk about that. If you're reading David and Goliath, there's a section in there about Martin Luther King Jr. and a famous um, photograph from the civil rights movement. You can write about that. But to generally speak about the civil rights movement, I try to keep us away from, right? All right. Current events. Write down five things, five current events that you can specifically or somewhat specifically talk about. Ready, set, go. History should be your biggest section. You probably have very few things, if any, written in current events. Am I correct? That's embarrassing for y'all. Y'all are 16, going to be 17. You're going to be voting in our next election. You guys should be able to speak to adults at this age about things that are happening currently in our country or around the world. Realistic question, not meaning to talk back. What? Why doesn't the school system teach us how to do that kind Good of thing? Good question. That's what my job is in here. That's what I'm doing, right? I mean, it's a great question, right? So that's one of the things that's, and that's why I say, like, I love this quarter because we get to talk about all the things that you don't talk about in your other classes, right? Last year when the insurrection happened, we talked about it. I think I was the only one on campus that talked about it. We talked about it. I don't shy away from things that are controversial or polarizing in here. I just have a couple of, of um, like, what am I trying to say? Standards that we have to live by, right? One, it's the hardest for me, is you have to be careful with your tone when you are talking about something that you are passionate about. I am the first to, to not follow my own advice. I have to be very careful on my tone, right? We have to realize that in this class, we have people that have different experiences, different backgrounds, different beliefs, and honestly, differing opinions than ourselves, which is fine, which is great, which is what society looks like. So we have to be able to have educated conversations with each other in this class where we don't get our feelings hurt because somebody doesn't believe what we believe, right? So I want us to feel like this is an environment where we can have difficult conversations as long as they are educated. That's my other like qualification, right? Last year, I think in sophomore English, Sometime in the spring, y'all started to have some kind of conversation about something. I don't know, about immigration or something. And it, like, it got out of hand because people started speaking about things that they only hear at the dinner table or things that they only hear in the hallways, which is fine as long as those are educated conversations, which a lot of times they are not. So that's why when we talk about things and you're like, I would use this as an example, I'm like, cool, tell me more about it. And if we can't say more about it, then that's something that you need to know in order to understand, in order to be able to talk about it, 
right? Like, does anybody know what's happening in Iran right now? Or Iran? Women's rights issues because the, a lot of the women are going on strike and instead of like actually wearing their hijabs, they're just like going around in and not wearing them. Yeah. The government's going crazy and they're like murder, they're shutting down shopping centers, public spaces. They're arresting people for protests. Like, they arrested one of their top soccer players. Um, because they are accusing him of killing two police officers in like a protest, which like there's proof that he did not do that in that protest, right? Um, so I, and I think it moves beyond just the women in that country, right? Like other people. So these are things that like I need y'all knowing. And, and here's why I, I'm going to send home an email today to your parents um, about with some pod, with some podcasts. I know podcast is very old person thing, but like if you can find 10 minutes in your day, like driving to work, driving to school, driving home from school, when you get out of the shower, getting ready in the morning, if you can find 10 minutes to listen to a news briefing, um, like I know, like and I'll send y'all a few, like Alexa, I do it when I cook at home, I'm like read my latest news briefing and it will pull the top news from that day from a variety of positions, right? From the BBC, from um, PBS, or from uh, PBS, from New York Times, uh, Washington Post, right? It'll pull like the top, and it's like 10 minutes. So what's gonna happen is here later this week, I'm gonna say, I need you to find an article that you can relate to this topic. And what will happen is you're gonna spend 20 minutes figuring out what hap what's happening in the news in order to find an article. So if you already kind of know what's happening in the news, then you can go, oh, I think this would work. What's happening in Iran right now would really work for this topic. Then you go find you an article fairly quickly on that, right? So that's one of the things that like we, I, I need y'all to know more about is y'all need to be more well-versed in what's happening in the current events. And I do, we do a lot in the next quarter to do that. Um, okay, let's talk about, did y'all, did anybody have anything in current events written down? Okay, Damar Hamlin. Okay, what about him? How um, the other teams went into the middle. Okay, so what? They prayed. So what? What's the controversy right now with Damar Hamlin? Wasn't there one person online who was, like, one of the coaches was, like, made, like, made, made a poorly worded post that was... Like, yeah, so I mean, like, it, like the event itself is not a current event, but the like we make it a current event because we look at like a controversy, right? The controversy is that the NFL waited twenty something minutes to cancel the game, where they had already announced players will have five minutes to warm up when the game resumes. When nothing like this had happened in the past, where somebody was resuscitated back to life on the field. Yes, yeah, somebody's gone down with a terrible injury. What about the right? Do it. Oh, the I mean, when the, when the, like a, like like and I don't think it was necessarily the the hit on him was bad, yeah, no, right? Because it was legal. But I think the other thing that's interesting that's being like around Twitter right now is the fact that everybody's thinking about Demar Hamlin and how not how bad this guy feels that made the hit, right? That was an it like an everyday hit, right? Football guys, like it was kind of like an everyday thing. Like it wasn't like a like helmet pull, right? Like it wasn't something that was was uncommon. So those would be things that I would talk about. We just can't talk about an event. We have to talk about what perspective can we look at it. Okay. All right. Let's jot down science. You have like one minute. Jot down pumpkins for science. Ready, set, go. Right, what do we write down for science? If you're just staring at it, that's embarrassing. You guys have been in school for 11 years. Oh God, to just stare at it is embarrassing. It's also showing that you cannot critically think. Gosh, why do you get multiple choice questions? 
Because you have to critically think. Am I going to harp on this for about another week or so? Probably even more. Yes. What do you got? Yeah. Yeah. And listen, like, here's the thing. If you don't know the name of an experiment or you don't know, like, if we get to literature, you don't know the name of an author, can you still use that example? Yeah. As long as you can explain it, right, in enough detail, then that would work. Yep. That works for me. What else? What else, JW? Um, placebo effect and COVID masks. Okay. That would work. I don't think so. What else? Environmental pollution and food shortages. Okay, as long as we can talk specifically, if like you're in apes, apes would give you a lot of stuff to talk about right now, right? For environmental stuff. But we have to talk more specifically about it, right? Okay, that would work. The new like research happening with nuclear power, that would work. Uh, Copernicus, anybody? Newton's Law? But that's like basic fundamental. It doesn't matter. Those are those are things in science that we can talk about. What else? Yes. Sigmund Freud, right? Like like if you are in psychology, psychology first semester and then AP psychology second semester, I think any kind of like um, psychologist or psychological study, I always think is very interesting. And listen, that's, again, that's one of the reasons why we read what we read is because I want our argument examples to have different examples than what the majority of the country will have, right? And so that's why we look that way. All right, go into literature. It needs to not be a picture book, and it needs to not be like a youth book. Something I would say, look at ninth grade past. What have you read? Ready, set, go, quick. Doesn't matter if you think you can make it work. What have you read? All right, what have we written down? Okay, most dangerous game works. What else? Lord of the Flies. Ready Player One. Okay. Was that ninth grade, right? I just read it. Okay, that's fine. What else? Yep. Okay. Fahrenheit 451. Even if you spark noted it, you can talk about it enough. Nobody wants to talk about the relationship book from last year. No, I would never talk about it. No, don't. No, I would never talk about that. No. Didn't y'all read the Odyssey? Or like a like a version of it? Okay. Romeo and Juliet. Divergence, like along the lines of Hunger Games and a little like elementary level. Lord of the Rings would work for me, right? If there is a movie that is made from a book, as long as you talk, I think it's better to talk about it as a book instead of the movie, right? Um, all right, so that goes, remember, again, one of the things that you could write down here now is the autobiography of Benjamin Franklin, because you just read an excerpt of it, right? That works in there as well. Remember, personal expertise would be areas where you feel like you are an expert. This is not personal experience. Personal expertise is different. None of us, some of us may have it, none of us may have it. It doesn't matter. That's what I want us to do first, as I feel like that's where we struggle the most is coming up with examples. The way that we will look at it is that we can make almost anything fit. It's just how you, it's like your perspective on it and how you tie it. Remember how we talked about bow ties? Like in rhetorical analysis, we'll really see bow ties here because you'll have to bow tie how your example shows your claim, right? So we can make almost anything fit. All right, so just as we do in rhetorical analysis, we need to read, annotate, and plan, right? Now, with rhetorical analysis, we were pressed for time because we were reading a passage. Here, I still feel like we need to take about eight to 10 minutes to read, annotate, and plan for argument. 
because what we need to do is we need to de deconstruct the prompt because when we deconstruct the prompt, we're building our language that we have for argument and we need to plan. The worst essays are kids that don't plan because I can tell that they're swimming because they're just barfing out facts over and over again and trying to find their way to an answer, right? When we have a plan, those are more clearly aligned with their claims and their line of reasoning is much easier to follow. If I feel like you're just jotting down everything you know, then that's what I'm reading and that there's no line of reasoning in that, right? So let's read through. Um, American essayist and social critic H.L. Mencken from 1880 to 1956 wrote, the average man does not want to be free, he simply wants to be safe. Write an essay that argues your position on Mencken's claim. We will always have like a speaker. You will always have a time period and you will always have a quote. Like these three things you will always have. Now, sometimes you'll know the speaker, and yes, absolutely that can help. Sometimes you, most of the time I will say you will not know the speaker, and that's okay. If they give you a time period, much like we do for um, rhetorical analysis, we want to figure out what is this speaker's rhetorical situation, like what was happening during this speaker's time period that would make him say this or believe this? So what's happening between 1880 and 1956? Both World Wars, the Red Scare. The Hold on. World War I, World War Two. What else? The Red Scare I heard. What else? Um, what is? Women's suffrage. Yep. Second Just general lynching? Yeah. What are you talking about? Like the civil rights movement? Yeah. You forgot that what that was called? No, not like that. I mean, civil rights was yeah. I mean, towards this time, a little bit more towards the sixties. Okay. Yep. Stop car racing. Uh, okay. So, yeah, prohibition. So, look, what I'm looking at is when I'm looking at, like, time periods like this, what did I just create for myself? Evidence that we can use, right? Not necessarily that you, well, maybe, but, like, if you're looking and you're going, okay, this is what's happening during this time, is that what caused this person to say that? We don't know, but... If I'm given a time period and I can write things that happened during that time period, then those are pieces of evidence that I can use before I even start to brainstorm, okay? So let's look at the quote. What are words in the quote that I need to fully understand before I can write this essay? Okay, so let's talk about what does it mean and we, this is where like we don't look up in a dictionary, right? Because we wanna kind of use our own context for this. What does average mean? I had somebody say mediocre earlier, and I think mediocre has a negative connotation in this, and I don't necessarily know if this is meant to be negative, right? Mediocre, though, we could also say also means what? Mid, yeah, mid-range. Okay, what else? What else can we say about average? Standard, yeah, that works. Okay. All right, let's talk about free. Okay. What else does free mean? What do you mean? Like decisions. Without expense, there's no consequences. I'm trying to go back to like your decision, like what? No restrictions. Okay, there you go. Okay. 
Anything else? Unlimited. Huh? Unlimited. Okay. Invulnerability? Yeah, kind of like if your, the theory of like complete freedom would be nobody else's choices affect yours either. So like you're not subject to anybody else's. Okay, I get that. So what I'm doing is this. I'm building language that I can use. What I want to tell you and what I need you to remember is I need you not to use synonyms when you are writing this essay, right? Key components like safe and free, you're going to get tired of saying safe and free just like words are valuable. You're going to get tired of saying safe and free. If you continue to replace safe and free with a synonym, you are moving further and further away from the prompt, the true meaning of the prompt. What I want you to do is I want you to use these to show how something is free. So use these to help define a situation. This is free because they are independent of blah, 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 right? So these words are used to help you show, to help you define situations, not to redefine those words. Now, my next question is how, like how can we be free? In what ways can man be free? I don't want examples. I want what ways can man be free? That's an example. Um, so, so what do you mean, like, in what way? Like, we're not gravitationally independent? No. How can we be free? In what ways in our life can we be free? Okay. So if you have mentally, you also have, that's the same thing. How else can we be free? So economically, what else? No. There you go. So now what I'm doing is I'm looking beyond, I think when we think freedom, we think physical freedom first. So this is helping me to see a little bit more complexity in what ways I could be free, right? Now, let's talk about safe. What does it mean to be safe? Would you say unconcerned? Yes. All right, that works. So now can we say like the how would probably fit the same categories we have over here? How can we say, or when can we feel safe? How can we feel safe? Yeah. Your hair looks beautiful. Let's put the brush away. All right, so now I've started to kind of build my language here, yes? Now, just like in rhetorical analysis, I have to find my task. In the prompt. It says that we need to argue our position. Argue, right? So there is my task. Now, when we have a task for argument, I need us to ask it as a question. What must I first do before I ask this as a question? What must I understand? Yep, that I have to paraphrase. So when I write this as a question, I would say, is Mencken's claim that, now paraphrase for me what Mencken is saying. Is Mencken's claim that That is the question that we have to answer. The answer to that 
is our thesis. Is Mencken's claim that man values their safety over their freedom valid? So I think in our thesis we have to include Mencken because Mencken was mentioned in the task. It's not necessary, like it's not written in our, our, our rubric that way, but like I feel like that's when, when it's addressed in the task that way, I feel like we need to address it. There won't always be like the person's name in the task. Right now, what we want to look at is we want to look at like a plan. So we agree, or we disagree. And when you agree, you say, when you agree with Mencken, you say safety over freedom. And when you disagree, you say freedom over safety. Now, what questions? in rhetorical analysis did we have to answer for our claims? What questions did we have to answer for our claims in rhetorical analysis? How? Why? And I think for this one, and some, it will work sometimes, it won't work all the time, I think when could be another question that we answer here. So look on this side. Actually, we'll do that tomorrow. Remind me tomorrow, and we'll start here. We'll try to create our how and when for these. All right, you have a assignment like assigned to you in Canvas for um, your notes, but it is not...